Hey strong people, Kale Beck here from StartingStrongMan.com with a bit of news uh, talking today about the news that broke yesterday morning uh, when uh, the owner of Cerberus, Cal, Cal uh, posted a video explaining that Rogue had applied for a trademark for the term strongman on all caps as it applies to fitness equipment in Europe and even more surprisingly that it had already passed in the United States. Such a broad term, um, people wondered, does that mean that the, you know we can't label anything strongman without uh, their approval? Uh, going through it seems like it more applies to strongman and and specifically their strongman bags. Uh, I have full details on startingstrongman.com, uh, including uh, the whole correspondence I had with Bill Henniger of Rogue and more. Uh, you know, in the, all the videos from uh, Cerberus Strength regarding this. And to, so, you know, the, uh, Cerberus put out this video. You can go watch it on, on uh, their Facebook page or uh, my website, uh, you know, which then sparked the statement from Rogue which they posted on Instagram. Uh, first off, you know, giving us a bunch of good news, which is relevant, that uh, the Arnold Strongman Classic will air on CBS Sports Network on 1220, I guess that would be, you know, this past year's, at 9 p.m. Eastern and 1225 at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's great. I don't know how much, what does CBS Sports Network, how many viewers it actually gets. You know, it'd be great if it was on regular CBS. Um, but still cool. Uh, the record breakers, they're paying out $50,000 to the strongman that lifts the most weight over 501 kilograms at the Arnold Sports Classic. And uh, four, that they're building a 15,000 pound we wooden wheel of pain for the Arnold Strongman Classic, uh, 45 feet wide and 30 feet tall. Then they address uh, this issue. There's a bunch of discussion that Rogue just trademarked the sport of strongman. It is not true. The trademark is the distinguished pieces of Rogue equipment. Uh, the trademark is not directed to the sport or strongman athletes. This mark is for specific products like the Rogue strongman bags with r features Rogue designed. We applied for this protection because more and more copies of Rogue products are appearing on the market. These are products that we have developed with the input of many members of the Strongman community and that we have invested a lot of time and resources in. It probably looks like we're going to try and tell people that they can't use the term Strongman for competitions, events, or equipment. That, is go that isn't going to happen. No way we are going to do that. Zero chance. I apologize for the confusion, Bill Henniger, owner. Um, in my opinion, this needed more clarification because... They're pretty much just taking their word at it, and then you know, uh, Bill was kind enough to to send me a message on Facebook and say, "Hey, email me whatever concerns you or others in the strongman community have. Go ahead." So I sent him this message: "Hey, Bill, thank you for being so receptive to questions and for Rogue taking an interest and playing a huge part in the growth of strongman. My main concern is that is that it's trademarking the word strongman as it pertains to fit various fitness equipment." I understand wanting to protect products you develop, such as throwing bags and not wanting other companies to make copies, but the wording of the trademark makes it seem as if it applies, um, as, as if it applies, uh, you know, as if it applies to any equipment using the term strongman, in all caps. I know you said on social media you won't enforce this, enforce it this way, but there are a lot of small businesses that could potentially that it could potentially affect and taking um, it purely on your word is unsettling. Uh, below are a few questions I've compiled from members of community. How do they justify trademarking the usage of words that dozens if not hundreds of other companies have used in the past? Um, two, why wouldn't you trademark Rogue Strongman or something similar instead? Why did you not advertise your trademark application so the community had time to support oppose the trademark? Does the trademark only apply to strongman or, you know, in all caps or other variations of the word? And, you know, an important one. Uh, what's to stop Rogue from extending their reach beyond defending the IP of their products in two or three years? What happens if the company becomes publicly traded? Four, how have they demonstrated 
that their trademark claim is distinctly different from its original meaning. Below are the answers from Bill Henniger. Hi, Kale. Completely understand the concern. My IP team has been putting comprehensive protection on anything we come out with. In this, they applied for the name we are using on Strongman Bags. We also filed patents. Cerberus, the company that kicked off the video, is in violation of our patents. They got a cease and desist, hence the issue. He blocked me from his Facebook page when I called him on it. We did not invent the sandbag in its original form, but we did design the style type and how the bag was made, etc. Uh, how the bag was made, etc. That is what we have a patent on. Steve Slater's built. Steve Slater built this with our sewing team from a sketch. Enough people had the concern you do, and I said we did this for the bag stuff only. I told the IP team to amend the mark, I mean the trademark mark, um, to be just that. We had and have no intention of doing damage to the community. Uh, that has been filed and can be re researched, etc. Should publish, should publish to the net sometime soon. Talking about the amendments. Um, the IP team is basically trying to set up barriers to companies copying the bags. There was zero intention to use it for other terms, but I can see the community basically has to trust me that we won't enforce it. Uh, so I instructed the legal team to make it exactly what I said and give uh, and give up any other rights, etc. We don't try to use it uh, because, like I said, we didn't try. We didn't do this to try and become a trademark troll, we just did it to protect the bags. Three, the mark only applies to use with equipment, so not events, people, etc. I had them change it so it is even more narrow and just dealt with the bags and that there is zero question to our, as to our intention. The category of mark is only for the equipment, not the sport, etc. If someone does not violate the design items, then there is no problem, but again, with us narrowing the scope, you don't have to take my word for it. It will be up via the USPTO. Five, the, the IP team expected to be able to protect the bag from people knocking it off. There were companies that knocked off the design and called it the same name. Some used our website, copy, etc. Steve Slater and Lori, Laura are sewing SME, designed the main bag, Cyclone, and throwing bag. They all have trademark and patent protection. By me changing the scope of the mark, it can't be used let's say if we took the company public, which we aren't, I respected those questions people asked, and if I will say it, then I will put it in writing. That is done, and it is all filed. The mark was done via the connection to the bag, etc. There are many other strongman trademarks out there with it in the name or in a different category. You know, he basically just uh, says, you know, he could have the RIP, IP attorneys talk to me, but that's, you know, not too important. Long story short, this is still from Bill. Long story short, I see the concern and don't want it to be one. Any th threat was killed so that the community doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, we need to get back to growing the Arnold Strongman Classic, World's Strongest Man, Legend Series, and Documentaries. We want to provide value, not extract it. Carrying that on is our only mission, not trying to enforce a mark against great people. So, Back to my words, to sum it up, it seems like this is pretty much all around the throwing bags. Uh, and you can go on startingstrongman.com for some pictures of them side by side with the Cerberus bags. Uh, you know, the, and it, I think this kind of just comes down to, uh, you know, IP protection. Uh, uh, Cerberus, I'm sure, has its own case uh, saying that they, they looked into it. Uh, probably have uh, Cal or someone from Cerberus on, maybe a future podcast to discuss this matter more in depth to get their side. Um, more so, but you can also check out the embedded videos on there um, on startingstrongman.com about that. So, sum it up, you know, what it really, you know, it's, it's uh, I think Bill's very honest in his response. I, I believe that. Uh, what it really shows is that Strongman is growing, and with that growth, it's become, it has become a viable industry in which practices used normally in other big businesses need to apply to protect and protecting IP is more important than ever. You know, gone are the days of it just being a backyard sport with just, you know, your, your cousin welding the equipment up in his backyard and just everyone just trusting each other and growing it because there's just too much money in it now. It's just different. There's, there's positives to that. There's negatives to that. 
Um, but all in all, I think, you know, for the next generation of Strongman, it's in a good place. I'm Kale Beck. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do, go to patreon.com slash startingstrongman.